This is my old presentation of how literacy is involved in the career of forensic pathology. As an overview of writing, um, literacy is involved in many ways in forensic pathology, and it is especially important for the pathologist to be knowledgeable and credible when they are completing autopsy reports, sending out emails to colleagues, um, present when they're performing presentations in court, or when they're writing novels or nonfiction stories from their experiences as a pathologist. Um, communication is a huge part too. It's also, it's probably bigger than the writing part because the communication factor is so important, especially in court, when the pathologist has to prove or disprove um, innocence or guilt with their findings from the autopsy and they have to remain knowledgeable to this subject because they have to testify their findings to the prosecutors and to the families of the deceased. There's going to be a lot of disagreements and objections so it's really important for the pathologist to remain confident in their findings and they have to be able to disprove and prove anything. Um, Dr. Karen Kelly in my interviews also mentioned that you will learn a new language in pathology, well in any medical field to be honest, because once you go to medical school, she said you'll learn a new language is called medicalis. Um, you have to be able to speak in this language to other doctors and professionals, and you have to be able to write and read because that's the language you speak as a physician. Um, some types of writing that are involved in pathology. The biggest one is an autopsy report. Um, a pathologist is required to write an autopsy report after completing an autopsy. There's advanced medical vocabulary um, and strong, distinctive um, details to um, pretty much tell everything that happened in the autopsy. And it is important for the pathologist to have good, strong medical vocabulary and good writing skills to make this autopsy report understandable to others that may be looking at it. Um, in pathology, and especially in the education part during college, APA formatting is the um, the style of writing that you'll use. So you're going to have to write a lot of research papers, reports. Um, when you're publishing something, if you're a pathologist and you have to publish something, your report's going to be in APA format as well. Um, letters and emails are very important when in a pathologist career because they have to send emails and letters to other colleagues to gain more information. They have to send letters to um, the detectives and homicide detectives they may be working on the case with, and it's important to have strong literacy skills so they sound professional and credible in these emails. Um, presentations of their autopsy findings in court, they have to present these autopsies in court, and it's really important for them to explain with diagrams, charts, and really explanatory details. In the documentary, that of my, the part of my observation, Dr. Baby, one of his court cases, he actually had a model of the human anatomy and diagram with a, um, one of those pointers to to point out the anatomy and the parts of the body that he found evidence in to inform the prosecutors, the audience, and the families of the deceased so they would understand better where he was coming from and they would more likely to understand his reasoning. Um, in pathology, also you have to be able to take your writing and make it into a form that people who aren't knowledgeable in the field can understand. So for example, you're going to talk one way to other professionals, but once you get in court and you're speaking to a bunch of people who have never been involved in this career, you have to be able to take your material and put it into a way that they can understand. Um, another big type of writing is novels and nonfiction stories. Throughout, there are several pathologists that throughout their career they find experiences to write about, and you find you can see a lot of pathologists who write novels or nonfiction stories about the mental part of it, or just some really cool um, cases that are a compila compilation of their most interesting cases. Um, the writing style is like any other medical or science career; it's very formal. Um, it's straight facts, no opinions, and this is important because all findings are based solely on evidence, and you can't just say, I think, you have to say, I know. Um, nothing can be opinion-based. In writing or presentations, um, the autopsy report has to be based on, like I said, facts. You can't, and the evidence found at the crime scene, the external examinations, and internal examinations of the corpse. Um, in college, reports are done APA. That's the writing style of any science career is APA. 
um, rather than in my life. Some writing samples that I'm going to talk about. Um, the biggest one, like I said before, is an autopsy report. This is what a pathologist mainly does, is they write and read autopsy reports after completing autopsies. Um, in an autopsy report, it includes an external examination and an internal examination. <coughs> the external examination covers everything, what he or she was wearing, what the scene looks like. Um, if it's a murder or a suicide case, then there may be a weapon or a murder weapon available and you have to record the odors from the crime scene, the body, any fibers that are found on them. You have to record everything, especially marks on the body, like ligature marks, um, stab wounds, gunshot wounds, etc. Um, the internal examination also covers everything. It covers the central nervous system, the cardiovascular system, respiratory system, um, gastrointestinal system, um, reproductive system, and urinary system. Um, the, along with the internal and external examinations, any lab, laboratory data is supposed to be reported. Say you have a polymer or a fiber that was found and you have to run a test on it. This has to be included in the autopsy report as well, even though it wasn't a part of the physical autopsy. Um, finally, and the opinion of the medical examiner is the last thing on a lab report. report and I don't mean the opinion just um, his straight opinion. It is an opinion based on the evidence found in the autopsy and the crime scene. This determines the cause and manner of the death. Um, another writing example is a novel or a nonfiction book. Like I said, pathologists often find the time to write about their experiences. An example of a nonfiction, or it's actually a novel and a nonfiction book, is Working Stiff, Two Years, 262 Bodies, and the Making of a Medical Examiner. This was written by a forensic pathologist during her rookie years, and it explained how her life was shaped by the cases that her life as a forensic pathologist was shaped by the cases that she completed as a, um, still as a resident and a fellow. Um, this is something that I'm interested in because I really enjoy creative writing, so if I become a forensic pathologist, I will definitely, as my career progresses, I would love to write a novel or a nonfiction book about my experience as a pathologist. Um, the documentate, or this right here on my presentation, is a lab report example. Um, you can click on the link and see a full lab report. The documenta documentation styles of a forensic pathologist uh, in the lab report is another thing like science. Everything has to be documented. Everything has to be written down, recorded for credibility purposes. Um, and all information from the autopsy report has to be present in court. So everything is really, it's critical for everything to be documented. You can't leave anything out. Um, all reports have to be cited properly as well. You have to document where you found your research from to give credit credit to other physicians and researchers. Um, and this is this is to prevent physicians forgetting credit for what other doctors and physicians have accomplished. Um, the major features of writing in forensic pathology, the biggest one is support and elaboration. A forensic pathologist has to have support from evidence and um, to create a credible lab report. And the lab report has to elaborate everything that was found at the, at the crime scene and um, on the body. This is in order to provide details to the court and to the um, families of the deceased. The conventions, um, reports in writing and communication, um, they have to have proper grammar um, and sentence structure to be understandable for those reading and listening. You can't, if a forensic pathologist uses bad grammar, they're not going to come across as very knowledgeable and professional. Um, the style, a forensic pathologist has two styles. One, they need to be able to talk in front of their colleagues and the other researchers. That's the language of medicalis, the one that Dr. Kelly um, mentioned. And the other one is the language you use to the court and to the families of the deceased. Like I said, you have to be able to put it in a way they will understand. Um, this, no, it's not um, overall, I've learned a lot about my career and how literacy is, in, literacy is involved in it. Um, it's so important to use strong literacy skills in this career because of the credibility purposes and just you're determining, your research will determine the verdict 
whether someone is guilty or innocent, and you can prove evidence from blood splatters, um, toxicology reports. All of this plays a huge part in telling the story of the deceased. That's something that Dr. Lopez Morel said. You have to tell the story of the deceased because they can't tell it. So you're in charge of figuring out what happened to them and telling their story based on what is found in their body. Um, I still want to pursue this career. I've learned a lot about it, and it just makes me even more eager to go to a medical school and learn more about the human body, and I look forward to pursuing a career in it. Thank you.